All right, so this is all about evolution. Um, what I'll do in a moment is, is give you a proper definition of evolution, because I think it, it's actually helpful to understand what it means in a, a biological sense. It makes a lot more sense when you, you're trying to consider what's going on with this. It's not the everyday sense of something becoming better, that we, you know, we might say something's evolved, we've evolved our ideas, or cars have evolved. Um, and we say that to, to mean something has got better, and that's not really what it means in, in biological terms. Uh, but we'll come back to this in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to talk first of all about Darwin, who is most associated with evolution, the idea of evolution, although he wasn't the only person to come up with it. He was certainly the only person who collected the ideas and, and got round about the right area. Um, so he made a, a series of observations. Um, now, at the time, this is quite... Um, <laughs> Theoretical. We'll come back to his word theory later on. Uh, it's quite theoretical. In other words, he thought about this and he came to his conclusions by making observations and thinking what might be happening. It wasn't until later that they were able to experimentally come um, confirm his observations. So it's sometimes an approach more associated with physics nowadays, where people you know think, oh well, this might be happening, and we you know we'd use a bit of maths and then experimentally find out later that it's true. But anyway, we'll stick with this idea of him just observing things for the moment. So what Darwin said was he, he noticed that organisms um, showed variation. There were differences, basically. Um, but even though they were, they, things were different, offspring were different, uh, organisms were different to each other, organisms were similar to their parents. Now that might seem obvious to us, you might go, well of course you look similar to your parents. But of course remember, unless you've got a, a mechanism to explain why that's happening, um, it, it's, it's simply an observation, it's an interesting observation. Why are things more similar to their parents than to their, um, to, to something that's unrelated to them or less related? Um, and that's that's what Darwin thought was an interesting idea. He also noticed that um, organisms pretended to produce more offspring, uh, lots and lots of offspring, more than they could actually support. If you think of rats, um, they produce you know, a litter of however many, 8, 10, 12, every few months. Uh, rabbits famously breed quite quickly. Uh, flies do. You know, even humans who take nine months, we could potentially be you know, perhaps breeding once a year for, you know, uh, one, once every year or two for however long we, we were active, sort of 20, 30 years. So we could produce lots and lots of offspring. We, we don't usually, but we could do. Um, but in, in nature, more offspring tend to be produced than can be supported in the environment. And he also noticed that populations, that's quite important, populations tend to remain stable. In other words, although we're producing lots and lots of offspring, the numbers overall of the population don't increase. The number of things dying is the same as the number of things that survive. And what Darwin was able to work out was what was explaining these things. And the idea he came up with, the hypothesis he came up with, um, was basically that things, um, what was later called the struggle for survival, or in other words, competition. So living things um, are competing for resources, whether it's food, light, space, mates, as we'll come to in a second, whatever it may be. Um, and whichever organism was better adapted, an adaptation member is a characteristic that helps you, that gives you an advantage okay in in your current environment there's no such thing as a best adaptation overall it's only best to, to whatever your environment is um, an animal that is very hairy might that might be a good adaptation if you're living somewhere cold it's a bad it's not an adaptation if you're living somewhere hot it's a characteristic that's actually going to be bad for you so it's better adapted to their environment uh, at an advantage so the organisms are better adapted to their environment tend to survive better and if you survive you've got a better chance of breeding and passing on those genes, okay? Or I suppose we could even say reproducing because it it also works for organisms that don't um, breed male, female, um, asexual reproduction. Things. The longer you survive, the more chance you have of reproducing and passing on those genes. Because of that, and this comes back to the offspring of similar to their parents idea, um, if some things are surviving more than others, those are the genes that tend to, sorry, those are the uh, characteristics, adaptations that survive in the population. Okay, 
Now, the problem Darwin had is, at the time, he didn't understand anything about genes. We now look at this and we, we know that the genes are the explanation underneath this. He didn't know at the time. So his explanation for these observations uh, was based on sitting around and thinking about it. We, we now have plenty of evidence, uh, particularly the DNA evidence, DNA comparisons, that this is the case. So I now want to try and look at what's going on a little bit behind this. Um, and I said I'd give an example of evolution um, and define what it is. Well, it's the change in allele frequency oops, in a population over time. That's what evolution is. And that's a bit sort of a mouthful. Let, let's try and break it down. Imagine we've got a population, and this works at the level of populations. It doesn't work at the level of um, an individual. If I drop a, a penguin into the middle of the Amazon jungle, it will not adapt to living in the Amazon jungle, it will die pretty quickly, okay? The, an individual organism isn't going to change. Populations can change over time. Why do things, why are things different? Why are organisms um, actually different? We know they've got different genes, okay? Or different alleles. Remember, an allele is a version of a gene. So the reason one organism looks um, in a population looks different to another, why does one duck look slightly different to another duck? It has slightly different genes. Why does a brother look slightly different to uh, the sister? They have slightly different genes. They have slightly different alleles, okay? They might be very similar, but they're different. So it's alleles that are driving these differences. Now, if we imagine that... Um, I'm, I'm going to use this idea of a gene pool that... Within a population, I'm going to use coins to represent this. Chuck some coins in here. Da, da, da. These are going to represent different alleles, doesn't matter what they are. Okay. Um, and as long as organisms within that population uh, are breeding together, these genes, these alleles, these versions of the gene, are just going to get mixed around between different organisms. Okay. So they always stay in that population, they stay in that gene pool. Now, if, for example, one of these genes controls something like, um, uh, well, let's use this uh, uh, idea of growing more hair. Perhaps these coins here represent an allele that represents being slightly hairy, and these ones represent alleles that are less hairy. And we have a change in our environment. Perhaps it becomes um, colder. Well, these alleles for being hairy are more likely to get passed on because they give you an advantage. Whereas these alleles are more likely to be removed from the gene pool because those animals with those alleles are dying out. So we might expect these ones to become more common within our population over time. So we've changed the frequency, there's more of them, okay? And that, that's really what evolution is. We're just getting some alleles more commonly than others. If those alleles are for a um, characteristic that gives you an advantage. Now, if the environment changed again, and perhaps it you know, over time became warmer, perhaps you'd get less of those ones and these ones would start to come back again in in terms of uh, excuse me their, their frequency so we're changing how often these things turn up you know it might disappear completely let's put them back in but we could have that, that and that's really what evolution is now the issue comes when people then start to talk about speciation because speciation you know what charles darwin obviously his, his book was called on the origin of species and what he was trying to say is how we got different species occurring. And this is where people start saying, well, hang on, you know, how do we, does it mean that dogs can turn into cats and monkeys can turn into humans? And it doesn't mean that at all. Um, what, what Darwin was talking about was common ancestry, but this is how, it, how the idea of speciation works. In order for things to be different species, remember this biological definition of species where it was about being able to interbreed to produce fertile offspring. Okay, so why can you know one cat breed with another cat, but a cat can't breed with a dog? Well, the the alleles they have are too different. Okay, how do you get though from one population into two separate populations with, with different alleles? What you basically need to do is to separate alleles out in some way. Now I'm just doing it by hand like this. Okay. But what kind of thing can separate alleles out? Well, two things, um, or two ways it can happen. What's called the allopatric speciation method. And this is where you have a physical barrier. So perhaps within our population, um, 
they, they live somewhere where there are um, it's mountainous and suddenly this not so I say suddenly perhaps over thousands of years we suddenly get um, we, we get flooding in the area so these populations which used to be spread all over the place are now isolated in different places we've got a you know different conditions in those two different places so the genes are no longer mixing between these two populations anymore and it might be that one side becomes more likely to have one thing one side might become more likely to have uh, another set of idols depending on the conditions and this does happen in case of things like islands slowly moving apart there is a geographical physical separation so it's possible to split your gene pool um, by doing that if, if the conditions are different. If conditions were identical in both places um, you probably wouldn't get much speciation going on. So it, it needs something that's quite different. Although you do find even, you know, the Galapagos, the famous example, um, even within quite a small space it is possible to have very very different um, conditions even, you know, within a case of being miles apart or even, uh, or, or even less. Um, the harder one to get your head around is um, sympatric speciation and this is where a change occurs in the population so that certain genes become um, more f uh, now let, let me go back um, rather than it being a physical separation um, let me give you an example first of all of say a biochemical one what would happen if some alleles came that um, on the head of whatever this organism is you know the sperm and the egg that normally meet and they, they work by having receptors on the outside if the receptors changed on say the egg cell so they had a shape that only allowed certain sperm from certain individuals to connect to it okay so random mutation that causes these things to change only certain sperm would then be able to um, access the egg so you'd only have certain organisms within that population able to breed together and others wouldn't so by changing biochemistry you can get a separation of, of uh, organisms within that population you can also have physiological so maybe it's, it's something to do with the anatomy of the organism it changes uh, perhaps the shape of the genitals have changed which means that some organisms within the I'm not going to draw the genitals um, can't interbreed with other ones um, behavioral and genes do affect behavioural. Perhaps in terms of courtship behaviour, you could get a, a difference in the way that courtship happens. So some organisms might be um, favoured for selection over others when it comes to breeding. Whatever the method is, as long as you are separating out the gene pool, so you're limiting the amount of interaction between a population, you can then get speciation. Because speciation is literally the idea that um, the, the two groups can't breed together. How you get that speciation, um, you know, which method, is it, kind of irrelevant. Um, I'll, I'll just mention here as well, it's, it's a long on this, three methods that we can change the allele frequency populations. Three, three methods. Uh, natural selection, which is the one we mentioned here about um, the environment um, has a selection pressure in some way, you know, it might be a change in the climate, it might be introduction of new predators, it might be introduction of a disease, um, it might be um, some kind of change in microclimate or whatever it may be. Um, but there's also sexual selection, these aren't mentioned in your book, these, these last two really. Um, sexual selection, which really links this idea of behavioural, that organisms might be selecting some individuals based on some other characteristic controlled by the, the alleles. So for example, peacock selecting the most symmetrical male peacock to breed with. Okay, so behavioural um, in terms of sexual selection. There's also something called genetic drift, which does occur, uh, it comes up in A2 actually, but it occurs in small populations. You know, this is why I put this um, pound coin one in here. If you've got a small population, just by random chance you might get two organisms across and none of their offspring happen to carry that allele and if there's not many of them these alleles floating around and it's a small population you can lose them just by random chance that's called genetic drift so these three things natural selection sexual selection genetic drift change the allele frequencies of a population and that's what evolution is remember evolution and speciation are not the same thing um, an organism can evolve without necessarily sorry <laughs> a population can evolve without necessarily becoming a new species but if the changes occur that happen to be something that particularly will affect um, breeding 
or if there's a change in the, in the environment which will separate the two um, uh, population into two or more parts, then you may well end up with speciation.